In this video, I'm going to describe the inner working mechanisms for writing and reading data in Cassandra. I'll also explain read repair, tombstone, and compaction. Knowing how Cassandra writes and reads data will help you understand why Cassandra can achieve such high performance. You'll appreciate the beauty of its log structured storage design. First, let's look at a write operation. The components and their sequence of executions form a write path. When a write occurs, the data will be immediately appended to the commit log on disk to ensure write durability. Then Cassandra stores the data in memtable, an in memory store of hot and fresh data. When memtable is full, the memtable data will be flushed to disk file called sstable using sequential I.O. And so, random I.O. is avoided, and it's the reason why the write performance is so high. The commit log is purged after the flush. Due to the intentional adoption of sequential I.O., a row is typically stored across many sstable files. Apart from its data, sstable also has a primary index and a bloom filter. Primary index is just a list of row keys and the start position of rows in the data file. Bloom filter is a sample subset of the primary index with very fast non-deterministic algorithms to check if an element is a member of a set. It's used to boost performance. For write operations, Cassandra supports tunable consistency by various write consistency levels. Write consistency level is the number of replicas that acknowledge a successful write. Write consistency level is tunable on a spectrum of consistency levels as shown on the screen. The two extremes are the leftmost, any, which means weak consistency, and the rightmost, all, strong consistency. A consistency level of 3 is very common in practice, or you may choose quorum as calculated by the given formula to be an optimum value. Here, the replication factor is the number of replicas of data on multiple nodes. Both local quorum and each quorum support multi-data center and rack-aware write consistency with slight difference as shown. Now we come to read path. When a read request comes into a node, the data to be returned is merged from all related SS tables and any unflushed mem tables. Timestamps are used to determine which one is up to date. The merged value is also stored in a write-through row cache to improve future read performance. Read consistency level is the number of replicas contacted for a successful consistent read, almost identical to write consistency levels, except any isn't an option here. During a read, the coordinator, which is just the node that happens to be connecting and servicing the client, contacts a number of nodes, as specified by the consistency level, for data, and the fastest replicas will return the data for consistency check by in-memory comparison. As it isn't a dedicated node, it makes Cassandra lack a single point of failure. It also checks all the remaining replicas in the background. If a replica is found inconsistent, the coordinator will issue an update to bring back the consistency. This mechanism is called read repair. When a delete occurs, the data isn't physically deleted immediately. Instead, a marker called a tombstone is made to indicate the deleted data. The actual physical delete is done by compaction. Compaction is simply merge and sort SS tables to create a new SS table. It frees up space and improves performance by reducing the number of required seeks on disk. During compaction, keys are merged, columns are combined, tombstones and TTL expired columns are discarded, and a new index is created. We've looked at how Cassandra wisely handles write and read operations. You've also learned read repair, tombstone, and compaction. Next, we're going to see another very important aspect of Cassandra, its cluster architecture.